13. And of course, next up, men's doubles, the second men's doubles, and in essence, two scratch pairings. So how on earth we predict that? I'm not quite sure, but wouldn't it be magnificent if it all came down to the fifth and final match within the tie, the third men's singles? That really would be a fitting climax to the last of the group matches here in Group C. So it is the former world champion, Jonas Rasmussen, playing with Joachim Fischer-Nielsen up against Ku Kian Kiat and Go Wei Shen. the former world champion, Jonas Rasmussen, 34-year-old from Orcus. Okay. Has the distinction of twice ending up fourth in the Olympic Games. I can't think of anything more hideous. The bronze medal playoff matches, quite frankly, the worst matches I've ever had to play in my life. Has you're so desperately close to yeah. being in a major championship final and then the next day when bitterly disappointed you have to go out and try and salvage something from it and try and win that bronze medal and as far as Jonas Rasmussen was concerned both in mixed doubles in 2004 with and then in the men's doubles in Beijing four years ago sadly lost both of his bronze medal playoff matches now, Steen, this is uh, the really interesting selection as far as I can see because York and Fisher Nielsen, the 33-year-old, usually just concentrates on mixed doubles. In fact, he's ranked number four in the world at mixed doubles with Christina Peterson. Whereas Jonas Rasmussen, usually in partnership with Mads Conrad, and Mads Conrad is here, but not selected for this. Now, I don't know... Have you got any inside information on why this selection? No, I haven't. Uh, but um, yeah, I imagine that uh, actually both Denmark and Malaysia felt that they uh, they needed to do something in the, in the second men's doubles that it was a match that they could possibly win, but um, but not with the uh, regular combinations. Um, of course, Joachim is uh, much more experienced in in these kind of matches than um, than Mas Conrad. Um, but I don't think he's been playing a lot with uh, with Jonas Rasmussen, and, and um, at first sight, uh, the two players' playing style doesn't really mix that well. Um, but it could be if if uh, the Danes could get the attack, then it would be quite lethal with uh, Joachim smashing away at the back of the court and, and uh, Jonas Rasmussen uh, finishing off uh, in front. And yeah, that sort of makes it up for a very, very interesting contest with the uh, cooking kid at the net. Yes, I suppose the other thing that we should take into consideration, of course, Jonas Rasmussen now having to play with a left-hander. Kukian Kiat usually plays with a left-hander, but in this selection is having to play with a right-hander. I think perhaps at times we might see a bit of confusion as to who's taking which shot. So it's not only a new partner, but a partner that's playing with left-handed instead of right-handed and vice versa. It's very different from their normal partnerships. Yeah. Very, very different. Yeah. Well, Jonas Rasmussen, world champion, of course, with Lars Borska back in 2003. In fact, all England champion two years ago with that same partner with Lars Porsco retiring after the World Championships in Paris in 2010. Well, York and Fisher looking very relaxed indeed. He says he's going to fire away on his first smash, so just duck if I hit it, he says. <laughs> Often players do that just to release some of the nerves, exactly. don't they? And... Uh, 
probably going to see some animated players here. I don't know uh, Go from Malaysia, but I know that uh, Cooking Kid is capable of some very, very interesting shots. And the same is uh, Jonas Rasmussen. And, and we and go B. Sham. On my left, Denmark, represented by Jonas Rasmussen. Welcome, Fisher Nielsen. Malaysia to serve. Cool King Kick to Joachim Fisher Nielsen. Love all. Play. Probably at least on the Denmark side, the two best final players. If you could speak of a players that are good at playing finals, that would be Jonas and, and Joachim. So, so very, very interesting to see if they can make this work. Relish the big match, One, pressures and excitement. Four. Some players are intimidated by it, but obviously, two Danes. I love the experience. That's one of the things that the Malaysians should try to do. They should try to, to gain the control of the rallies. Uh, Joachim is, is not that attacking uh, men's doubles player. That's over. Two. Oh. Good defense from the left handed. But also a little misunderstanding there. Yeah. And I think we'll see quite a bit of that lack of understanding who's covering what. Real hesitation from Kuki and Kiat. Very versatile player, Norcom Fisher. Started off as a singles player, never really made it into the big time, despite winning three singles titles. One in Iceland back in 2003, Spanish Open in 2004, and the Bitburger Grand Prix in 2005. But I suppose it's only really notable men's doubles performance was reaching the final of the Denmark Open with Matthias Bo back in 2006. And of course, very famous nowadays for his mixed doubles. And actually reaching that final was what brought Joachim back in the national team. He insisted that he wanted to play singles in his younger days. And, uh, well, his body is not exactly built for singles. He was quite injury prone. Yes, in fact, he's had injury problems recently of course uh, had a knee operation in March 2010 he was out for eight months his first tournament back was the world championships in Paris well played by the Malaysians here one of the things about Joachim that makes him a very dangerous mixed doubles player is his uh, very uh, steep and hard smash. He, uh, he creates a lot of points in the mixed doubles. That's a little bit harder to create the same amount of points in the men's doubles because the defense is better oh. the over. opponents. Six, four. Yeah, I do love watching him play though because you always know exactly what's going through his mind. He shares his emotions with us spectators. Very animated. And always, every rally seems to give 110% of the intensity of the man as he's playing. It really is very, very good to watch.
Yeah, that's a clever placement of the smash. Eight, very, very unpredictable where they're going to hit it, and, and that's something that I really like. If, if the game gets too predictable, you must expect the opponents to make countermeasures. So keep a good variation in the game. Oh, that goes down as a missed opportunity. Um, Gobi Shem. Oh, that's nice. Makes amends in the very next rally. That's good Five, character. Nine. match by the Danes. Six point advantage at mid-game interval. And as a Malaysian that's not really what you're looking for getting Jonas Rasmussen and uh, Joachim Fischer started. Feeling good on court. that a bit of a stark contrast between the two players. I think that the Danes have come out with a most definite game plan, whereas the Malaysians seem to just be unsure of their tactics. 11-5. Play. Incredible Great defense from Joachim here. Stood his ground well, didn't he? Didn't get forced back. He played the first one, stood his ground. Racket ready once again. Oh, that's good too. Oh, it's brilliant. Fantastic save by the Malaysians. Oh, it was clever play from Jonas Rasmussen. Seven. Change of pace at the nets. We haven't really seen Cooking Kit in the 
his usual dominating style. Yeah, of course, usually when he's playing with Tan Bing Hyong, he has a partner with a huge smash, and therefore he's got the freedom to rush forward to the net, take those half opportunities. And it looks to me as if he's just slightly hesitant, knows that he can't afford to do that perhaps so much within this partnership. looks very spectacular doesn't it around the back shot but rarely does it get much advantage 15, if any Jonas Rasmussen far too experienced not to uh, be ready once again to pounce on the next one challenge Joachim at the net, get him to lift, perhaps take some wrong choices. Well, sheer movement there from Joachim Fischer. Desperation defense, how on earth he got it back, but he managed to keep it flat over the net. He was in all sorts of trouble, but look at his movement, dashes forward to the net, really threatening his opponents. And once again, that goes down as a forced error. We talked about the fact that Ku usually plays with a left hander. We should also mention that Go Bi Shin usually plays with a lefty. Take a look at the left hand. I'm going to take a look at the left hand. I'm going to take a look at the left hand. I'm going to take a look at the left hand. Dane's just discussing that. Um, Cooking kits uh, covering uh, the middle a lot when uh, the Malaysians have the attack. So the Danes want to try to to use straight counters instead of across the middle. Flying back a little bit now. No, that's good. Lanzaba, seventeen, thirteen. But what a 
Murph about that backhand. What a power he generated. 13, Extraordinary shot, full pirouette at the end of it. He really is a character, isn't he? It's good for the game. Also very, very important person in the Danish team. Always cheering his teammates and leading them on. 14, 18. no backswing of the racket there from Fisher Nielsen. Still generated the power across court. And the Danes now just two points away from this opening game. Pleased with that. 20, game point. There's the confusion. 40. Still got it back. Six game point opportunities. playing it or not. Yeah, quick glance up to see if you can see a replay of that. Oh. Spoon's gone in the racket of Kiki and Kiat. 17, 20. The Danes are talking a lot to each other. In between rallies, I don't see the Malaysians uh, discussing that much. And as the umpire Ian Spear confirms, opening game to Denmark, 21-18. Signs to me at the end of that game that the Malaysians were beginning to play themselves into form. Yeah. 
talk a little bit about the attacking uh, game plan um, we don't want to Court attack one, a lot one, we want to change seconds. so it's not the same player attacking all the time so yeah. we don't want to get tired in the back of the court and apart from that it was uh, quite a detailed coaching with a lot of um, specific Court. situations Court. discussed Court. That's different from player to player. Some, some are Second quite comfortable game. getting a lot of details, whereas others, they like to have the bigger picture of what should be going on. Double play. from Jonas Rasmussen. One love. Well, it's usually Ki Kyung Kiat who's the showman of the Malaysians. Not on that occasion. things in uh, the past month or so has been that Jonas hasn't been playing that well. He and Mas Conrad lost in the first round of the Europeans to oh another Danish pair. And it seems like he's been running out of steam, so... One, two. Yes, and that's when they were number two seats, I think, at the European Championships. Exactly. When Klaus Paulsen, the, uh, the assistant national coach, told them to to take uh, good rest in between the rallies. went off balance Two. for hitting flat and hitting long. And as we're talking of shape, I don't think that the Malaysians seem to be in excellent shape either. Judgment once again from Jonas Rasmussen, just calmly leaving the shuffle, letting it go long. It's really quite extraordinary to me, though, with Jonas Rasmussen, with his regular partner for so many years, Lars Porska, when he retired from the game. And uh, I guess Rasmussen taking up with Mads Conrad, there was a new challenge. But when it was clear that they weren't going to qualify for the Olympics, you know. How does a player at the age of 34 keep that motivation going? Yeah, I think I think actually the explanation is uh, is simple. He just loves badminton. Yeah. direction, the quick change of direction is a little bit too slow at the moment. Five, four. Yes, 
Rose is going through a little bit of a bad patch at the moment, is Rasmussen. The way says our service judge, but then bottom back to Belgium. Five. Okay, you're right. on the Danes. And the coaches and the rest of the team are cheering for Jonas Rasmussen. I don't think the Danes want to see this go to a decisive game. Because they fear the stamina and fitness levels of Jonas Rasmussen? I think so. And also, uh, we don't want to get Cook and Kit started. Yeah. Believing that he can win this match. Yeah, because when he's full of confidence, Eight. Eight. he really is always a difficult player to play against at any time. But who is one of those inspirational players, isn't he? When he's on a high, all his shots, he tries the most extravagant shots imaginable. And they all seem to work when his confidence isn't high. Sometimes his choice of shot is called into question because he makes himself look a little bit silly at times. But again, one of these enjoyable players. Oh, absolutely. Love to watch him play. That just illustrates what you were talking about, Jill. He lost that rally Nine, himself. Six. This shot there, directly into the record of Jonas Rasmussen. Yeah, he's the sort of player that, you know, I as a spectator absolutely adore watching, but probably the sort of player that makes you coaches want to pull your hair out. Exactly. See, I've been coached to a number of those kind of players. Thirties, <laughs> 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 of course. A super smash. The channel attack. Perfect placement. Right in between the two Danish men. I think uh, Shemgo is uh, beginning to play a little bit better now. Seems a little bit more confident. Oh! No, 
that's a good smash. Unexpected. Smashing across the body. And that should put an end to that boost of confidence. After the smash from Iki and Kiat, and that's always a sign that the confidence is growing, isn't it? Oh, what a turn! Goodness me, nigh on perfect. Well, as far as the Danes were concerned, I think it was very important that they still had the lead at the mid game interval. Danes are quite confident that if they lift two or three times to the Malaysians, they will open opportunities up in, uh, in the counter-attacking game for soft, straight shots. 11, nine, and Joachim was commenting that he felt that nine. it was the game after the first two or three shots that really was deciding who was controlling the rallies. Great play by Joachim Fischer. Serve. I thought what a good serve it was, but it was an even better reply. Seemed like he himself enjoyed it a little bit too long. Joachim yeah, isn't a natural net player. Always been more confident on the back part of the court. just a little bit nervous with his low serve they're making the error I think defensively Go has to be a little lower when he's in his defensive stance, he seems to me to be standing a little too tall. It's very important when you're defending to crouch down low, bend those knees. 
I agree, and uh, as a uh, sort of uh, general comment, given from a distant perspective, you always know better when you're close to the players in, in the camp and so on, but, but from a distant perspective, this uh, splitting up of uh, Kuantan hasn't been correct. We've seen uh, Cooking Kit, um, the way I see it, just a shadow of the player he was when he was playing with Tan, so um, there must yeah. have been some really strong reasons for, um, for taking this gamble. Yes, unless they do something pretty quickly. But I mean, if you block the face out on television, and, and you wouldn't you wouldn't know that was Cooking Kid playing there. No. Not his normal exuberant self. Coaches smiling, full confidence that they will take this match down. Yes, and with a five point advantage and only needing another three, I wouldn't bet against them. Uh, yeah, and an even better smash from York and Fisher. 19, 13. Two points from victory. Two points from the required third match in the overall tie. Great defence. Well, 13. looks to have been a costly gamble as far as the selection on the doubles is concerned. Because it's now match point opportunities 19. for Denmark. Sort of shot we're used to seeing from Kuki and Kiat. Look at the style. It's looked like he's on he's on some kind of strike. Mm. And he doesn't agree with the selection or something like that. I don't know. No, yeah, certainly hasn't played his usual sort of style. Well, two match points saved. For a third time, lucky as far as the Danes are concerned. 21, 18, 21, 15. And the experienced men of Danish badminton. And Joachim Fischer, who rarely plays men's doubles nowadays, has played an absolute blinder. Well, you always know with Joachim Fischer you're going to get 100%. And with the experience of Rasmussen to back him up, well, that's the clincher. Danish coaches absolutely delighted with that, and so they should be. 
and once again confirmation 21-18, 21-15 in a match just under 40 minutes well it's become a tradition with York and Fisher well, he throws rackets or towels or something into the crowd it's become a firm favourite with Babington fans all over the globe I really must say that the Danish gamble with the second men's doubles paid off their confirmation that Denmark have secured top spot in this group, group C of the Thomas Cup. 